Hello, welcome back. It's the Clay Golem here. We're in Foundry uh, VTT, but we're looking at version 12. Uh, so in the previous video, we did our transition over to version 12, our backups and everything else had a bit of a chat while we did all of those updates, a bit of a chat by myself, of course. Um, but in this one, I want to create a brand new world. Uh, and I'm going to call this something silly, like uh, V12 testing world or something like that it doesn't really matter i've got to select my game system of course dnd fifth edition uh, and i don't need to worry about any of these background images and stuff at the moment i can just go on and create my world and in we go so a bit of a first look uh, what's in here what the, some of the new features are etc uh, everything looks kind of normal at the moment but we're going to have some new additions on the left hand side the first thing i want to do is create myself a new scene so let's go into scenes i'm going to create a scene um, and i think a good one to use might be thunder tree actually so right click on configure and we come into here if it's going too quickly for you it's uh, this is because most of the most of the people have already seen us do this um, uh, but uh, yeah, there's other videos you can watch about how we create our scenes and things at a bit more of a, uh, a sedate pace. But I don't want to bore those people who've been with us for a while. Again, I've seen all this. Just hurry up. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, right. What I want is I've got the map for Thunder Tree in here. Where did I put Thunder Tree? There we go. Brilliant. Let's use this. And the reason why is because we've got outdoors, we've got indoors, we've got several different buildings and things like that. So I thought it would be useful. All right. First thing we notice is, of course, we've got a grid here on the map and we've got a grid that um, Foundry has produced for us and they do not match. So we can go right click and we can come into grid and we can do our normal grid stuff. But there are a couple of changes here. So first of all, let's make our grid really obvious and make it another color. Uh, so it's easy for us to see the foundry grid that we ideally we want to match with the other one. Um, but we've got a couple more options about the grid scale, um, but the grid style here. So we've got solid lines at the moment, but we can change that to dash dots if we wanted to. Uh, dotted lines doesn't appear to be any different. Uh, square points, we've only got points in the corners of those squares. Uh, Diamond points doesn't appear to have made any difference. We can change the grid thickness, by the way, just to make things a little bit... Oh, there we go. So that's, how big can we make these? There we go. So if I make these much bigger, that's your diamond points. Now we can see the difference between dotted lines, dashed lines, square points, diamond points, and round points. So you can pick whatever you like and make them however big you want. I mean, personally, I think that's flipping hideous. Uh, I'm going to go back with solid lines, make them nice and small, and of course I tend to, if I've got a map where they're already printed on, I tend to fade them out. Um, let's see if we can align this immediately though, huh? Yep, let's uh, get this a little bit closer to this. This is not particularly new though, is it? This is just me uh, sorting this out. So I can alt and mouse wheel to change the size of the image in the background. Which way do I want to go? Um, sorry, I want to shift a mouse wheel because I want to bring up the size of which way do I want to go? I want to scale the image up about 1.5. That's quite close. Let's scale it down a little bit from there. Hold shift and mouse wheel, bring it down again. Now, I know what you're thinking is like we've got add ons that do this for us. We've been over this ground. I don't want to be using add ons at the moment. I want to be looking at core foundry version 12 stuff um, to make sure that we uh, we know what foundry is doing as a core thing a little bit like when we very first started and we just did everything really manually just to make sure that we understood what was viable for us all right that is not remotely perfect but it's good enough for this because that's not what we don't say it <laughs> do not say it what did i do i clicked revert changes instead of save didn't i what an idiot remember kids i do these things so you don't have to <laughs> right make the image slightly smaller slightly smaller again uh 
Oh no, I want to make it slightly bigger. I want to make it slightly bigger. Slightly bigger. That looks pretty darn good. Uh, slightly bigger again. Now it's not aligned, but it will do. I'm going to click Save Changes. There we go. Right. All right, so we've got basic grid alignment. It's out, but I don't really care for this purpose. Um, and I'm going to turn down that grid a bit so we don't need to stare at it the whole time. All right. It's aligned well enough. So what have we got that is new here? Well, let's start off by looking at the options under our configure for Thunder Tree. So we've got our basics. Uh, nothing here is different. This is all fine. We've got our grid. We've just looked at the differences there of being able to uh, to change that line and stuff. Uh, and now on our lighting tab. Now, again, we've still got pretty much the same stuff here to do with darkness levels and things. Um, so, yeah, we can set what the global illumination threshold is and what the darkness level is. So for this map, um, we know under our lighting controls we've got a button to make it full daylight and we've got a button to make it fully dark, but we can control that in here. So if we want a bit atmospheric, we can actually say, well, and let's put it at 0.5, it's always going to be gloomy. So regardless of any light sources and things, it's always going to be half dark. Uh, we can do that. And we can change the global illumination threshold. And what that basically means is if there's enough light, you can see everything. If it drops below a certain level, the threshold, then global illumination stops and they rely on torchlight or whatever it is that they want to rely on. Um, and notice that we can lock that light level. So I'm not going to turn that right the way down. I can leave that up there so it's easy for you to see. Uh, nothing magic there. Uh, and we've got our ambience stuff here we can stick on and I'm going to stick on rainstorm because we're going to be looking at a couple of functions that will affect that and rainstorm is the easiest one to see. Uh, we also have this environment lighting tab. This is new I think uh, where we can do things like adjust shadows. Okay so this is about environment lighting we haven't put any in yet um, dark ambiance, so we can change our dark. Oh, we can put a hue on it. Well, let's make it dark. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so as this gets darker, is this what this is going to do for us? Can we change? We can change the. Yeah, look, so green, it's more orangey, it's more red. Oh, okay, yeah, so you can change the hue of the, effectively, this is to do with the lighting update, where they've introduced, so you've got light, but you've also now got darkness. So rather than darkness being an absence of light, it's a function in its own right, which means you can actually affect that darkness, um, which is what this is doing. So you can change this to move it however you want it to be. Um, let's turn that back down uh, and play with the shadows intensity. See how sort of faded this is and we can put those shadows right up there that's good let's see if we can make it daylight again we'll bring that up uh, and this probably won't have much effect shadows if we've got full lighting on but we'll play with shadows again when we have put some lights onto here so let's just save changes um, and we'll come back and look at those in a minute all right so top left then what options have we got top left that are different let's start with our actors nothing at all measurement tools all kind of the same tile controls nothing different here um, not option wise um, drawing tools we do have something new here so i can draw a anything i want um, and i can stick this out and obviously i can double click i can change that text um, to anything I like. I can also right click, double right click this and get some options here like I just did. But we now have this drawing role and it tells us about this. So a drawing which represents an object is rendered in the primary, primary canvas group and is affected by lighting and fog of war exploration. So this test, unless they can actually see this, they, that won't appear on their screen for them which is great. Drawing which conveys information is rendered in the surface group. Okay, so let's keep that 
and then we're going to copy and copy and paste it. Sorry, <laughs> select this one. Uh, we can change this one to be information. Okay, so this one that's information is always going to sit on top of lighting, weather effects, and stuff like that. Whereas this one isn't. Uh, I need a actor. Oh, I haven't got any. Of course, I have. Don't. Uh, let's create Bob the player character. All right. So, and let's drag Bob out here. Uh, now, Bob is a non-existent entity. He doesn't have anything at all because I've literally just created him. But what we can do is come in and look at things like his vision. Vision enabled. That's what we want. And he's going to have basic vision. All right. So when we've got Bob selected, uh, he can still see this test. Yeah. So he can see this one on the right, which is information. But he can't see this other one because he's got no vision going on. Uh, now, um, I thought we'd just put basic vision on for him. Enable vision. Oh, I've got no lighting on the scene because I haven't got global lighting on for the scene. That's okay. We'll come back and test that in a moment. As you can see, this is my first time looking at it. But straight away, we've proved the fact that if we select our Bob, we'll always be able to see test even though he can't see anything else at all. So that's nice. We can use that, you know, over here. There might be arrows on the edge of a map or something like that always going to be able to see those information things and of course like anything else you can hide it so they can't see it if you wanted to nice okay good so that's one thing that's different we've now got that where we can layer that text on top or beneath uh, under wall controls we've got some options here let's just zoom in on this building uh, we've got our normal walls so we can just draw our walls straight in here oh look they're all over the place not very wonky not very straight at all um, but look, we can force snap to grid vertices. If we have that on, it's going to snap. Now, bearing in mind that I'm not aligned to the grid very well, but you can see that that is snapping. Okay, so I've got that snapping on. That's all good. No problem. We like that. And we can draw the rest of our walls. But what we also have, this next one down here is a terrain wall that we can draw. Uh, let's come and do that down here. So a terrain wall is, I don't want my snap vertices on for this. Um, hello. <laughs> so terrain wall is a bit different. So what that means is you can see through a terrain wall, but you can't see through the other side. The idea of being is if you're looking up a slope, you can only see so far. They're looking through these woods. I can see into the woods, but I can't see what's beyond the woods because it's too thick. Let me show you what I mean. I hope this works anyway. Um, I need to put global lighting on. I need to do that. Let's do that now. Uh, duh, 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 lighting, uh, global illumination, please. Thank you very much so that my character can now see. Um, if I walk behind there. Yeah, that's not quite doing what I want. Okay, but. This is where area where we're looking at. I just drew those terrain walls. So I drew it around these bushes. So I can see into these bushes through the first wall, but I can't see what's beyond the second wall because the terrain is in the way. And if I move around this terrain wall, around this side, I can still see into the woods, but I can't see what's beyond the woods because it won't let me see through that second one. So this is a really good way of being able to do something like cliffs or things like that. So if you're at the bottom of the cliffs, you can see the cliffs, but you can't see what's beyond them. Yeah. Uh, if you're at the top of the cliffs, you might have it differently where you can actually see well beyond the cliffs. You want it only one way. So that's uh, terrain walls really useful. Um, just we'll find cases where we actually want to implement those properly. I'm just trying to rush through and show you what we've got that's different. Uh, the next one here, we have invisible walls. Uh, excuse Foundry, uh, Reddit in the bottom right hand corner, <laughs> people asking questions about stuff. Um, invisible walls. We can put out invisible walls straight away. Now all this does is it creates a wall that blocks movement but doesn't block sight and sound. So think of it like a glass wall or a force field. And we can do that anyway. So we select any one of these walls, we can change these restrictions and stuff. But this is just already there. It just does it straight away for us. Next one down, ethereal walls. And you can just see there under that, it says it blocks sight and hearing, but you can move through it. So again, we can just slap that out. 
Um, don't worry about the fact that he's wonky. So again, we can go in and we can configure any of our walls and change it. But this icon is straight away giving us normally restrict movement, normally restrict sound. But uh, Sorry, don't restrict movement, don't restrict sound, but do restrict light and sight. Uh, next one is drawing doors. We can just draw the door. I didn't want to do that. Draw the door. There we go. Uh, and we can draw the door straight in. Okay, so that's going to automatically set that to be a door. Uh, and the next one down is a secret door. So we can... Stop doing that. There we go. We can straight away draw in a secret door. Oh, again. It's only the way that these settings are set. They're just nice shortcuts. We can go straight to them, of course. And we can draw windows. So let's draw, uh, let's draw a window in here. Uh, no, that's secret door still. Oh, wait, do windows. Thank you. I can draw a window in there. Now, again, that is just these settings, but it sets in the light and sight proximity by default for us, which is great. We can also clone, um, and we've got that snap to grid, and we have a function to close all the doors on the map if we want to. So, yeah, nice quick little tools for, for doing those things. Nothing magically new in this area, which is absolutely fine. Um, under lighting, let's create some lighting. I'm going to pick some buildings down here to play with for this. Um, let's create a light source. Okay, It's not going to snap to grid because uh, I've done it wrong. Look at the new interface. When we open these up, look how shiny that is. I think that's really nice. We've got a lot of our normal stuff here. The coordinates of it, elevation built in. So we can put these things up higher if we want to. So in theory, you can have a an overhead tile, which is the top of a bridge, and you can have lights on the top of the bridge, and the player characters can move under the bridge, and the lights are, in fact, above them. Um, same things we've got here with the emission angles. Let me just move here so you can see this a bit better. Can you see that this is like a pie shape now? Um, smaller chunk of pie. Uh, we've always had that, and... We can rotate that angle however we want it. If we want a light just in a particular direction, we can do that. We've got our light appearance, we've got our intensity, and we've got our darkness activation range. Now, darkness activation range is all about how dark it gets before the light comes on. So uh, if I put in this at 0 0.5, for example, what that means is this light will be off until it gets half dark, and then the light will come on. Again, that's not new, um, but the way they've updated lighting uh, and changed some of the functionality is great. We can put some lighting animation on, of course, if we want to, um, and those bits. And under advanced options, uh, we've got provides vision, which is all normal. We've got that shadows thing that we had before um, that we can play with. So there's not a huge amount of change to the options, but the actual lighting effects. So let me update this one. The actual lighting effects that we have are really, really nice. So I'm going to change this one, put this at uh, 0 .0, 0 0.8, for example. Uh, and I'm going to change this animation. I'm going to make it uh, chroma uh, to put up the animation speed, etc. Now, you're not going to notice anything because those lights, I need to go, I want to go back and just turn off my global illumination. I'm going to grab that character wherever he's gone. I'm going to drag it over here. All right. Did I turn off global illumination? I did turn off global illumination. All right. So let's make it. Let's make sure we've got him selected and let's make it uh, dark and watch what happens to our lights. Hopefully it works. Fingers crossed. It gets darker or dark. This one pinged on. And now we've got this light. And now this one again because I had a different threshold. I put up the intensity that one's popped on it's got to a certain darkness now we could do that before but these lights are so much nicer in in my opinion i think uh, some of the color controls i've seen a few sort of demos and stuff look we can play with that shadows again look at the one on the left we can make it really shadowy and gloomy even though we're not affecting the light itself all we're doing is affecting the shadows that are cast so we can still make it brighter um but with more shadows and just make them a bit deeper so it enables us to do some really nice atmospheric stuff using our lights uh, which is good i like this again whistle stop tour guys i know it's a bit um i'm rushing but i'm doing that for a specific purpose 
I just want to give you a nice overview of the whole thing. So uh, let's go back to our person here. We've got the lights on, but if we bring up the daylight, as it gets, that's one switched off because it's getting too light for it. This one on the left will also turn off as it gets nearer and nearer daylight. So not sure if you've seen, but you can have like city scenes where you can click to lower the global illumination and all the city lights come on. Um, and then maybe it's dawn, you click a button so the global illumination, the light level comes up and all of the city street lights turn off again. Absolutely brilliant. Right, so yeah, lights, not a lot of diff not a lot of changes in the actual um, options and things like that, but they are much more beautiful and they work really, really nicely. Uh, what about ambient sounds? Well, there has been some changes here as well, so we can draw this out. Uh, and a lot of these are the same, so we can choose our... I don't want that. Go away, Reddit. Stop it. Um, we can choose some sounds uh, and we can go with, uh, let's not go with the Wilhelm scream. Let's go back to Stormwreck Isle sounds and pick something like, oh, our dripping water in cave. Let's pick that. All right. So uh, I don't want to make the volume too loud because we know what I'm like with volumes on videos. I need to be a little bit careful with that. Uh, volume easing. We've looked at that before. Uh, it's constrained by walls, all of that is normal, but we have some special effects at the bottom. So we are going to do a bit of listening in a second to see what those differences are um, for this. But we're going to leave nothing on at the moment and just create that sound effect. Now if I create my, uh, grab my token, you can hear that cave dripping, right? Hopefully that's a good volume for you. And that will die out as we get further away. If I open this up, I can add these effects on and I can add things like reverb on um, and I can put up the intensity of that. So let's see what that sounds like now. Now I don't know about you. That's a, I don't know about you, but to me that sounds much more echoey with that reverb on. Even though the original sound's already got some echo on it, that reverb seems to really enhance that and make that much more uh, much more interesting. So, yeah, um, I said in the last video, I don't really understand what half of these things actually kind of mean, um, but we have them there. Now, we've got muffled effect here as well. I'm not sure what that is. Don't... Apply an audio effect to the sound which filtered or transformed uh, to the sound which filters or transforms its sound. Hmm. Not really sure what that is supposed to do. Got to have an effect on first, I guess. You certainly have for that. Uh, have no options in there, so I'm not, what, not really sure what that is. I'm not sure if that's built in for a future feature or quite what. Um, but there we go. So we've got some additions to sounds as well. Okay, a couple of other things I want to look at in this video. I know it's a whistle-stop tour, but I just want to show you what we got, really, before we start delving in and playing with it. Let's go up to our configure settings and look at our core. So this is the core foundry settings we've got here. And almost all of this is the same. Um, there's only a few bits in here. Uh, combat trackers all the same, etc. But we do have dice configuration. So by clicking on this, we can... Oh, why is that one different? Um, for each dice, D4, D6, D8, D10, 12, 20, and percentage, you can choose whether this is a foundry digital randomizer roll or a digital roll using, um, using the twister random method or manual input. Which one's on manual input? Uh, oh, okay, D8s are on manual input for whatever reason at the moment. So what does that mean? What that means is, is this individual here is, let's see if we can, uh, let's, give him, let's give him an item. Um, what does D8 damage? Uh, longsword, right? Let's give him a longsword. Chuck that in there. All right, so he's got a longsword here. Um, so we can roll to hit using that longsword. So just open our chat here, click this. Uh, and it's going to ask us to do an attack roll. 
and that's a normal attack roll for us. It automatically rolled that. You heard the click of the dice. <clears throat> we haven't got dice so nice on, so we've got no visuals to go with it, but that all works. If I click damage, again, it's going to ask whether it was normal or not. Excuse me one second. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> and I click to roll that damage. It's not going to roll it for me. It's going to actually say, you know, what is it, what is it you rolled on that? So we looked previously at an add-on, didn't we, to be able to use physical dice and input the number. Well, that add-on is now superfluous because it's built into Foundry version 12. Um, it's right here. Oh, I rolled a four. Okay, brilliant. There we go. You rolled a floor, uh, a floor, a four, and it sticks that in, and you can apply it, etc. Uh, obviously, we've got not, we haven't got anything targeted, so we're not going to apply that damage. Um, but yeah, so that's in there. That's just in the base game now, or even, in fact, in the Foundry core. It's not even the D&D &D, uh, section. Dice configuration, make sure that uh, you know that that exists. I suspect you will either use roles, like physical roles or Foundry roles, and that's it. You probably won't ever come in and change this once you've set it, but be aware that you can if you're using one of those games where you want them to physically roll their own dice. All right, anything else changed in here? I had a look through and I didn't see anything else in here that particularly um, leapt out at me at being different. Um, I think this is all fairly similar stuff. Uh, and of course, 5th edition, while that has had some changes and some updates, that's nothing to do with the V12 um, stuff, so we don't need to look in there. Ooh, okay, what have we done? We've looked at, we looked a bit of lighting, we looked at a bit of sound briefly, uh, we've looked at... Um, we got the weather effects on for a reason. Okay, so I'm going to look at this one here, region controls. This is the big boy. All right, this is this is a significant uh, addition to the game. Now, by clicking this on, we see we get some options to select regions, draw regions, uh, and things like that, including that snapping to grid. And I literally can, just like we would with the monk's active tile, we can draw out a region. Okay, so just like drawing a tile, this is very, very similar to Monk's active tile triggers. We've got a tile, oh, no, we've got a region here. I've got to use the right language. We've got a region here uh, that we can call test. Let's call it, I'm going to call it test one. Uh, I can change the color of it if I want to. Let's make it that fairly horrible green. And again, we've got built in elevation stuff here. So if it needs to be on a particular floor, we can do that it's only on the first floor it's not on the ground uh, which is great visibility only on the region layer so again if you're on the first floor you can see it if it's on the first floor as well if you're on a different floor you can't see it because you're not on the same one you can have it always visible for the game master or always visible for anyone whatever works for you but it defaults to if you're on the same layer you can see it assuming it's not hidden okay just update that. Oops. Just open it up again. All right. So shapes here. We've got one rectangle. And if I hover over, you can see. So just to the left of this box, you can see it uh, is showing me which one I've got. Um, this is one shape attached to this region. I can add other regions on here. Okay. So I or rather other shapes. Uh, can I do it just by doing that? Uh, no, that's not the way to do it, but I can, if I want to, draw a, another region. Testing purposes, um, let's draw that. And I really want that to be, uh, I don't want it to be a separate region. I want it to be a shape within here. Uh, create shape from control walls we're going to look at in a minute. Yeah, okay, we're going to look at that in a minute. Um, but we should be able to add a new shape to this so that we end up with lots of different shapes all part of the same region. Um, just trying to work out how to do that. Can do it. I know we can do it. <laughs> I know you can. I don't want that region. Hmm.
how do I add this shape to here? I'm sure there is a way. Can I select them? Got to be on my regions. Can I select my regions and say these are in here? No, I can't. I'll have to have a proper play with that and see how I can do that. But I know that you can. You can have multiple... Uh, let's get rid of that one. Uh, you can have multiple uh, areas as all part of the same region. Okay, so uh, there is one way I know we can add that in and that I will get to in a moment. So uh, yeah, not perfect. Don't 100% know what I'm doing with this stuff, of course. But under behaviors, this is where we set what happens here. Okay, so this is where it's kind of similar to Monk's active tile trigger. If I So we're looking at this stay down here so that you can see the region we're talking about all right so this this area here this rectangle okay we can add a behavior to it and we can choose what happens in this area so we can adjust the darkness level just in this area so you can make an area that is for some reason weirdly darker than anywhere else you can attach a macro to it or a script you can pause game you can suppress weather and you can teleport or toggle a behavior. Let's teleport. Okay, so we're going to create a teleporter that says this is teleport token. And what's its destination? I haven't got a destination. I need to put in a identity in there. So let's update that for the moment. It's not going to work right yet. I've got my region two here. Let's see if I can move this on. You know you want me to. I thought I could just move that region. Let me get rid of it. I'm going to draw it over here. Okay. It's defaulted to blue. It's just going to randomize that. So if this is the... Let's call this landing one. I call this here. Um, and uh, this is the area itself. And I could save that. But what I want to do for this test region here... I want that to teleport over to there. So with Monk's active tile triggers, what we would do is we'd go, oh, yes, I want to, and then we would click the destination. That's not quite how this works. If I open the destination one, see at the top right, it's got this copy document UUID. If I click that, you can see pop up right at the very top, it's copied that scene to the clipboard. Thank you very much. If I go back into my region one test, I edit, that is what I can paste in there. I can press this button here. Uh, hey, what's going on? There we go. Had to um, control V to paste it in, then click that button. Okay, so clicking that button doesn't automatically add it. Uh, but you can see just above here, it's now added, I've misspelled it, it's now called leaning one rather than landing one. Ah, <laughs> oh, so professional. Um, and we've got that in there. So this behavior, okay, so this behavior for this shape here, the behavior is um, it creates a teleport token and moves them over there. All right, so let's check to see if that actually works as it should do. Where's my character? You are down here. Uh, where was my teleport location? It was somewhere here, wasn't it? I'm sure it was. Oh, a bit further over. Bit further over. I'm over there again. So if I move over here, I move over what is invisible and teleports me over there. Okay, so just like Monk's active tile triggers, we can teleport from one place to another, which is really nice. Uh, again, we're going to have to do quite a lot of sort of testing and using this properly in situ to make sure it's working the way we want to. But straight away, we've got a little teleporter there that we can use for you fall down a pit, you... Um, what we need to ch test at some point as well is whether we can teleport to different scenes using that. We should be able to, but I don't know. <laughs> I haven't actually tested it. Okie dokie. Right, what else do we want to be able to do? I'm going to create a couple of... I'm going to draw some walls quickly. 
uh, give me give me normal walls and I'm just going to draw walls uh, around here don't worry the fact that they're wonky you're used to my wonky walls draw walls all the way around here um, and just for kicks and giggles let's make uh, let's make that a door okay so we've got two areas now that are completely walled off so it doesn't matter if it's got windows or doors in it we've got walls in there now if I go back to my regions and if I go back to my test region and open that up if I want to go to shapes and add extra areas one thing I can do is by clicking on walls okay so clicking on this button just up here I can add shapes by collecting walls so if I click it you say it's not controlling any walls well okay let's highlight these walls here click that again it's added on it's called it a polygon because my walls are so wonky <laughs> but I've got another area let's select this add it as well so this one trigger so effectively if you think of it as monk's active tile trigger you've got one tile that's the trigger and in the case of teleport one place that's the lander with regions we've got three regions that all of them share the same behavior what that means is our behavior is teleport so let's update that so this room down here if we grab our token and we walk down here i've got no blinking vision on have i can't see anything <laughs> let's just slap a light source out here can you see it now yeah you can see it now so if I open this we know that this a whole place here is part of that region if I try and walk into that room it teleports me back over there so even though we have the teleporter over here We've also got the teleporter here and it will work over here as well because they're all the same trigger even though they're in separate places. So that's potentially really, really useful because it means you can use, um, instead of having multiple trigger tiles like with monks, you can just go, hang on a minute, this region, the actions, the behavior, got to use the correct terminology, the behavior is triggered by any of these regions. Doesn't all have to be the same one. Okay, what else can we do with regions? Uh, so apart from teleporting one of the things we can do add a behavior is uh, suppress weather so if I just click that this is why I put the weather on earlier because this is I knew I was going to get to this and update there is no rain in this building because it's part of that region there is no rain in this building because it's part of that region and there's a weird patch here where there's no rain outside because it's part of that region. So these region things are going to be really powerful moving forward. Um, now again, we're going to have to, it's nowhere near as uh, complex as Monk's active tile triggers with the amount of actions that we can do by default at this time but it does allow us to run macros which means it is as powerful as monks it just doesn't have that functionality already built in um, but that suppression of weather effects is a big one for me anyway so that i can have a scene like this where it's raining but actually it's not raining indoors which is really really nice and of course we can use it for affecting you know light levels and stuff like that so let's quickly do that let's look at our uh, our test one again add a new behavior on uh, for adjust darkness uh, and see how this rides uh, rides works um, so you can have it as it will brighten it will darken it will override um, and let's put that halfway and did you just see how much dimmer it suddenly got in these areas here so look how much dimmer this region is compared to the surrounding area Let's get rid of that so it hides the the thing yeah that just suddenly dimmed down quite a lot see how dim that is compared to this one here 
and we should be able to adjust that right away down so that becomes even more obvious so adjust this darkness uh, which way do we want to go modifier we can put that right the way up to perhaps 9.9 .9. and there we go you probably just saw it jump so again it's even more noticeable how dark this room is compared to this room here yeah really quite dark compared to this so suddenly where we've got somewhere like this that is outdoors um, for most of it but we've got lots of small buildings we can quite easily go well look this is a region here suppress the weather and make it darker immaculately suddenly we've got really easy way of saying this is indoors that is outdoors and that is super super useful super super powerful uh, I don't need to worry anywhere near as much about lighting my scene because I can just use that done all right so bit of a whistle stop tour really really fast we will be implementing and using a lot of these over the next sort of few videos um, we're going to go back of course and look at some of our scenes that we used for Fandelva or maybe even Stormwreck Isle and go right what can we do differently now I spent a long time learning about lighting and stuff uh, and sound effects when we did the fungus cave for Stormwreck Isle and now a lot of that stuff has been replaced by some really easy tools here. <laughs> so that might be a really good one to go back and look at and go, well, let's rebuild that from scratch using these new functions here. And we did that without mods as well. So we can do that, which would be really good. Um, but it would also be nice to start a new, uh, building a new world only in using version 12. So we'll do some conversion stuff and we'll also do some new building of worlds um, and I might possibly continue Strahd in the background just so I'm not overwhelming you with lots of different ways of doing stuff and just give you regular updates on that of what we've done. So if we are going to create a new world for Foundry version 12 um, and using these tools I don't think we ought to just replicate a published module. I think it might be nice if we create something completely unique um, and I might get you guys to help with that and input your ideas. I'll have a bit of a think about that. Um, but if we come up with something unique, we are in a position to be able to go, actually, if we're using all of our own sound effects and visuals, maps and stuff like that, uh, we might be in a position where we go, hang on a minute, we've created a, a, a one-off adventure, you know, like a one-shot or something like that, that we can actually package up and you guys can just use. Um, as long as we're not using other people's material. Can't do that with published stuff, of course. But if we do it, we bloody well can. <laughs> Excuse my language. All right, that's going to bring us to the end of this video. Um, which of these features excites you most? Uh, for me, it's definitely the regions being able to do things like the dark, the light levels inside buildings and the weather effects. I think, for me, that's it. That's the big ticket number. Uh, let me know in the comments what, what's excited for, uh, what you excited for. I'm t falling over myself. I'm so excited. <laughs> what are you excited for? What do you like about it? What do you not like about it? Is there something you don't like about it from what you've seen so far? Uh, and I'll see you in the next video where we'll start using these tools uh, a bit more um, and we'll learn a lot more as we try to figure out how to actually do stuff rather than just a showcase. Thank you for watching. Really appreciate your, uh, your following, your likes and everything else. And I will see you in the next one. Do you take care now?